It's not uncommon to have an inoperative fuel gauge. Some of the things that can create this problem is the sender on the pump, also the fuel gauge, and some of the control devices associated with the fuel gauge. Before I actually show you some of the testing procedures, we're going to talk about the way the sending unit works on the fuel pump. Most senders will look similar to this. You have a sender arm with a float, a variable resistor card, and two wires coming from it. What we've done, we've hooked up our ohm meter to our sending unit wires. As we move the sender arm up to represent a full tank, you can see the ohm rating change. This change in resistance is what the fuel gauge circuit will see. And this is why the gauge fluctuates as the arm moves. If you have an inoperable gauge, there's a few tests that we can go through to determine if it is a sending unit creating this problem. It's a common misconception that if the fuel pump's running, then there is power going to the sending unit. In reality, these are two separate circuits. As you can see, we have four wires going to this connector. Two of the wires are gonna be for the fuel pump operation and the other two are going to be for the sender unit. The first test we'll make is available voltage to the sending unit. We'll do this with the key in the on position and the connector unplugged. We've determined from looking at our vehicle wiring schematics which two connectors to probe. We've also looked at our vehicle service manual and determined what voltage should be present at this connector. Depending on your vehicle, the color of these wires and the voltage could vary. We've determined with this test that our voltage is correct for this vehicle. If your reading is incorrect, then we would have to follow the circuit to determine where the issue is. It could be very possibly a poor connection or a chafed wiring. With our available voltage being good, the next test we'll do is a voltage drop test. We'll energize the circuit by turning the key into the run position and plugging the connector back into the sending unit. With our voltmeter lead still back probing the proper circuit. Your voltage drop reading should always be less voltage than your available voltage reading. The reason for this is the resistance created in the sending unit. During our voltage drop test, this shows that there is actually resistance through the resistor in the sending unit. So that tells us that that circuit inside the tank is functioning properly. If your voltage drop test shows the same as your available voltage, then we have a problem with the sending unit in the tank. With our voltage test at the tank, we've determined that the sender is working properly. At this point, there are many things that can create an inoperative fuel gauge. They could be chafed wiring, a connector, could be a PCM, could be the instrument cluster. To further diagnose these items, you may be required to use a scan tool. You may be required to remove the instrument cluster. It's very common to condemn the sending unit whenever the fuel gauge is inoperative. But as we can see, there are many things that can create these issues. Just replacing the pump isn't going to fix a fuel gauge each and every time. 